It is a very nice day out today. Um, today is June the 13th. It's around noon-ish. And I'm on my way up to the woods. Because that's where the Kubota and the haybine are. And I'm going to go out and cut some hay. I was told to cut until I break something. So I'm hoping that I can finish the field before that happens. But you never know. I'm supposed to adjust the windrow width so it'll be one notch narrower than we usually do because I think we are going to at least with some of this field just bail it without raking it so I think I gotta move that up put the pin back in okay Gotta go take the pins out. These pins keep the haybine, the haybine head up while it's just parked. This section of hay right here is, has been cut down through the middle, so I will start there. Of course. It left the rake up here, but it's kind of in my way. Oh, I have to mow around it. We're getting to low four again. All the way to 2,000 RPM. Now I set the camera down while I maneuver around the rake. Okay. Alright, getting close to finishing this first section of hay. So I still have that other section and then that hill area back there to do. There is an alfalfa part of this field down there, but we are in the middle of chopping that for green feed for the cows right now, so I won't be cutting the rest of that. All right, as you can probably see, we have the alfalfa section of the field is right in front of us, right there. And you can see we've already chopped a bit with the chopper and a little bit around the other parts. So I won't cut that, but then we have this hill area right there, and then this section right here, which I'm going to cut right now. Okay, getting close to done with this second section as well.
All right. Now I just gotta move on to this field. It's all the same field, but this section of the field. It's almost impossible to mow in this field without getting my mirror knocked back like that. something like actually break here yeah that's broken okay um. all right so this part that has the teeth that kind of pull the hay back is broken off of its other side it should be fit right into there but as you can see, it's not. Hmm. And I'm not so sure there's an easy fix without getting a new, a new bar. Because it looks like the bar all the way across is just one piece. Strange. Well, I guess that's it for cutting hay for now. Okay, it's Sunday now, the next day, and we got the hay bind fix. Now I'm pumping up the tire, and we're about to go up and finish the last of that hay that I didn't get cut yesterday. Okay, just gotta finish this little patch right here. It's not too much to do. Alright, just this little bit left. And now the outside round. And I will probably go slower. So I can get as much as I can without grabbing in the woods. And everything that's at the edge of the field. I believe that will finish it for this field. So I think we're, the plan is to come back tomorrow morning and bale it. The plan is right now to probably not rake it, just to bale all the rows as they are. A couple of days ago I was baling some older hay that we had cut earlier that had gotten rained on and before I did that we put some more baler twine in the baler because we were almost out but all we had on hand was some small square baler twine so today we ran and got some actual round baler twine that we're gonna switch out with a small square baler twine and leave that for actual small square baling We already started from this roll, but we'll just take it and switch it out with the other one.
I gotta pump the tire up, of course. We clean the shop up, but the hose still gets caught on stuff. And now we wait. Alright, it's Monday morning, about 10.20 a.m. maybe. And I'm on my way up to the woods with the baler, and I'm hopefully gonna bale hay. All right, we're here. All right, gotta put the pickup down. All right, I have a fairly good portion to do today. And since Wilson didn't rake it, I have twice as many rows to do. So I gotta get started. Hopefully, nothing breaks.
There goes Dad with a bale of hay that he just wrapped. Okay, I'm getting close to being done with this first section. We have this section and then one just like it right over there. And then the whole side hill section, which is probably going to take the longest. Dad's working on changing a plastic roll. Haha, <laughs> good thing this stuff is pretty dry. This one's gonna be a little big. And it still rolled out of the baler with no help. Nice. Okay, I'm about to finish up this part and then head on to the last section. Okay, taking a noon break from the baling and wrapping because this little girl has brought lunch to the crew. Please, little girl, introduce yourself. My name is Lydia Fink. I am 14 years old and I have 78 chickens and I brought my dad lunch. And Hank. Which does not today consist of chicken, right? No. Okay. My chickens are for egg laying and entertainment. Now explain chicken entertainment. That's a new one. They're hilarious. It's so interesting to just sit and watch chickens. You can learn so much about their natural behavior and it can make it a lot easier to see when somebody is acting weird and they're sick. So it's you a mean, good practice. Like when a chicken is acting weird. Yeah, when a chicken is acting weird. Okay. Not, not like someone, a person. Okay, well, what did you bring me for lunch? I brought you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, some peanuts, and an apple. Okay. I made Hank a butter and cheese sandwich, because for some reason he likes that. This is peanut butter and jelly? Yes. Oh, what is this? It's a note. Love you. I love you. Yeah. Now, oh, isn't that special? It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, do you see uh, the bales way over there? They could probably use a little artwork to scare the hawks away. We have Lydia paint eyeballs and uh, all kinds of things on the uh, bales. Eyeballs especially to make the hawks think that it's something bigger than they and alive. Uh, we, do, we don't want the hawks landing on the bales because they, yeah, the crow. they stick the their field. big sharp. Well, as we were saying, the phone battery went dead, so I just happened to have another camera with me. have never operated video on this camera. Hank's the expert. He's the one who has all the gear wrapped around his head. I have a pet crow. But we were talking about why Lydia paints eyeballs on the bales because we don't want the hawks landing on them and sticking their long claws through the plastic and making holes into which oxygen can get in. And water. Yeah. Stop the fermenting process of the hay 
and uh, actually make it mold inside the wrapper, which is very poor. Very bad. The cows don't like to eat moldy hay. No, so that's why we want to keep the, the hawks off off the bales. Have you yeah. any turkey nests? No turkeys. <laughs> There's Hanker's Banker. Are there still bees in those bee boxes over there? Or did they leave? I'm not sure why that does not focus on... Hank was having a hard time getting it to focus last night. Must be something that's not set up properly on this camera. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's because it's on manual focus. Let's turn the lens to autofocus. Maybe now it will focus on here. Nope. Well, that blob, that orange blob, that's Hank inside a track. Well, that's a track. That's Hank inside. out there bailing. So how does the hay crop look this year? Actually, I'm a bit disappointed. To me, it seems less than last year. It has certainly been drier. We're not in a drought, but compared to the last two years, it's much drier. So that may have something to do with it. Also, this is June the 15th, and we're just bailing this. I am a teach you that he will take care of you no matter what happens. Yeah, that's a constant lesson to be sure. We are bailing this two weeks late for my preference, but this is the very last of the first crop. Two weeks late because a big roller went out on the back door of that baler and I had ordered it, was slowed down by the Memorial Day holiday, so something that should have been dropped off the next day actually took almost a week. And then when I got that part, I realized it was only half of what I needed. I misread the diagram in the parts book, so I had to order the shaft that went through the roller. That took another couple of days. And we were actually sidelined by a couple of days of rain. So Which was a good thing. It was a good thing. Finally, we're getting our hay bailed here. But it's it's less than last year, and because I'm two weeks late, it's lesser quality. Although this is grass and not alfalfa, so quality goes down slower in grass than it would in late alfalfa. It's going to be okay, Dad. Believe the lie. It's going to be okay. <laughs> She's, she's learning well from the old man. She comes in crying about something to me. I tell her, Lady, uh, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> Believe the lie. Believe the lie, Lady. Everything's going to be okay. And it is. I'm just a bit too cynical with the believe the lie stuff. But... Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm just rambling on here, doing nothing, wasting digi gi digital film, and I need to be eating my lunch. Yeah. And I'm not really sure how to shut this off. I've Try gone almost five minutes. Try the oh yeah, okay. Thing. Say bye. Bye. In this part, you always have to be careful for fallen tree branches and things, because for whatever reason, it always happens to fall this place right here there's another one right there
just have a couple more rows left here in the center and then there's the row around the outside and then I'll be done bailing and then I will probably take whatever bales I have left that are sitting around the field and take them up to where dad's dumping all the rat bales right now and then he, he won't have to drive so far to get them wrapped which I'm not sure there will be that many bales actually because I have a small one in the bale and then he's wrapping one and there's only one more that needs to be wrapped that's out here right now Okay, I'm coming to the outside round. All done bailing this field. While some of you may remember a video Hank made about a month ago where I was complaining about my rotten seat here on this tractor, and I was certain that all of the seat manufacturers watched this channel and would, in a matter of a few days, pony up free seats stacked on my front doorstep, but they must have been busy and haven't seen that video yet. But there was a loyal viewer of our channel. He and his wife sent us a check to be used for a seat. And uh, was it you who went to Farm and Fleet with me? Must have been Wilson. Wilson and I went to Farm and Fleet to try to find a seat for this tractor. The one we were looking for was not there. And... I wasn't enamored with second and third choices, so we didn't buy a seat, but we came home later that day. Went to the shop and did some drilling and fixing and welding and put it back together and reinforced it the way the seat manufacturer should have in the first place. So it's as good as new. We didn't need a seat. I took the money for the seat and bought fuel and... Uh, we just have a little bit of taping to do over here on the foam cushion. And it should be good as new. So I am certain now, I am certain that all of the sales executives at the 3M company watch this channel. So, you know, tomorrow even maybe there'll be a huge box of tape on my doorstep and we'll have more than enough tape to tape up this handle. So thank you everyone. Don't worry about my seat anymore. 3M has it covered, I am sure. Uh, so, you know, just keep enjoying the videos. And I'm enjoying my seat here today. It's really nice. I'm glad we could fix it without spending more money. And we'll just wear it out for another couple of years and then decide what to do. Okay, now I just got to put the baler pick up and we can go home. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.